A term used to describe how people in deep self-exploration re-examine their relationship with their religion and God can also apply to individuals rethinking how they view their nation's culture, politics, and numerous events occurring in the world today. This term is called deconstruction, which has caused many people to go into deep denial or even deep depression. Welcome to Four C's One Family. I would like to share with you some thoughts I have while living abroad that caused me to re-examine several cultural, social, and political beliefs I once believed were perfectly normal, but in the end forced me to readjust my beliefs and values and above all, admit the conclusions. It became easier for me to observe global events from overseas in ways that I would never have been able to while living in my home nation. It became significantly easier to detect how influential people and nations twist domestic and global events and policies to project positive images and narratives of their country and government. Now, this may not appear to be anything new to you, but what would sound shocking to you is how this twisting has influenced or infected the minds of individuals who are the causes of this type of manipulation. Now, when someone has been removed from a familiar environment, whether voluntarily or because of situations out of their control, they tend to have a deep urge to search for, well, individuals like them. They often find out and very quickly that many people they begin to associate with also carry the desire to learn and explore. And over time, some develop new habits and encounter conflicting ideologies and opinions while at the same time exposing some personal deficiencies. In an earlier episode, I talked about how some foreign nationals became what I call toxic foreign nationals. And you can click on the link above to hear more about that. You know, I, I bet that if you were in this situation, you'll find yourself sharing your experiences with others and later learn how some of these experiences may have provoked you to rethink how you lived your life and in your home nation and how some foreign nationals abroad live theirs. And this may cause them to, or even you, to become overly excited about your or their home nation's quality of life, which is often one-sided or even presidential. Now, the destructive events that are now taking place in Ukraine has caused me and other foreign nationals to think about our situation here in Taiwan, for example, and how the rest of the world interprets it. Now, for example, you see, Taiwan has gone through many destructive events and developmental changes that have caused many families to have been broken up and lives to be lost. Still, the Taiwanese people's resilience kept them pushing forward to create a democratic nation that demonstrates what positive reforms can do. However, the threat Taiwan is currently under reminds its citizens how fragile their island's nation's existence has become. You see, politics in its pure form is very much like a religion. It's like a religion with a rigid doctrine put under the control of individuals in you know, powerful positions, often charismatic individuals, and they really influence a lot of people in many mysterious ways. <laughs> Many of those in or who have taken powerful positions have legitimate concerns and causes to feel that their motives are misinterpreted. Now, I can't comment in detail what may be on their minds, but what I can comment on is how several people I know here currently, especially expats living here under the similar, a similar situation as those in Ukraine, are thinking. You see, Russia's unprovoked attack of Ukraine is the fuse that ignited vast amounts of questioning, especially in foreign communities, in many nations, I should add, and they have been asking very open questions. Many of them have begun to seriously question their own country's 
commitment to democracy and world peace, which may be a good thing. You see, it appears to me that many agreements between nations over the past 70 years have built in plant obsolescence that allows parties involved to appear that they have the right in the future to reinterpret an original contract or translate it in a very different way. Plant obsolescence, Ji Hua Xing Baofei, describes how product manufacturers and even policy planners create and design products and policies that beyond a specific time either deteriorate or completely self-destruct. Now, this is how I perceive documents like the 1994 Budapest Memorandum on Security Assurances, which is a combined agreement that gives security assurances to nations once part of the former Soviet Union, and the 1979 Taiwan Relations Act that references how the U.S. and China are to perceive with their Taiwan issue. Please refer to the links below for more detailed information on the mentioned documents. Now, providing these links doesn't mean that this program's host or network endorses the comments or policies presented in these documents. Because there's just too much room for financially and militaristically endowed signatories to later back out of their agreement and bolster that their interpretation of an agreement is being misinterpreted or ignored, which has given them no other choice but to react in a certain way. Current events, historical agreements, documents, and memorandums like these carry different or more significance to the life of someone living abroad who just happens to be where the focus of these contractual agreements are based on or referred to. While events in Ukraine are accelerating, this is just one attempt to present how those who have made a life abroad may one day have to face social and political deconstruction that may force them to reformat and reconfigure the way they interpret events taking place in the world today. Several foreign nationals I communicate with here in Taiwan are finding themselves going through their own version of a deconstruction. They are now questioning some of their past beliefs that they at one time regarded as unquestionable, but now see as selfish, prejudiced, or even ignorant. Now, this isn't my own opinion. These responses are coming directly from their mouths, and maybe this is good. Fortunately, they now see how Taiwan has been working hard to develop into a nation that has learned the values of mutual respect and civil rights. Because many of them have invested their lives in beneficial ways while in Taiwan and observed its positive progression, they now wish that they had spent more time showing the great things Taiwan has done. And I believe it's still not too late for them to do so. While the world is focusing on the events occurring in Ukraine today, I hope they remember to look east and learn how Taiwan may soon one day become entangled in a similar situation. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thompson, Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.